Citizens of the world, welcome to a reborn Terra Nil. This is a game that's about rebuilding nature. Some say it's a reverse city builder, a weird thing to say, but you basically build stuff up to restore nature and it's kind of a building puzzle game sort of thing, which we did check out a while ago when it was pixel art. But it's not pixel art anymore. Devolver Digital picked it up and it's now a fully fledged game. They sent me a review code to check out the game and also just a note to sales apparently contribute to the Endangered Wildlife Trust. So that's something you can check out. Let's click on New Restoration. I've not seen any of this besides maybe a trailer here or there. I've not jumped into the game and I'm excited to see what this game has become over the last couple of years. It's a dead world. But then there's a book, Beginner's Guide to Ecosystem Restoration, I think it was. This book serves as a guide to the intricate process of restoring an environment from a wasteland to a thriving ecosystem. Good luck with your journey. Um, okay, select your approach. There are a variety of approaches to wasteland reclamation. Gardener, want to create beautiful, vibrant landscapes? Seeking more relaxing experience? It's difficulty levels. These are difficulty levels. Ecologist, want to restore biodiversity and balance environment uh, with strategy game experience? Environmental engineer, sophisticated machines, not recommended for a first playthrough. All right, we'll do the, we, I, we've got strategy experience here. Ecologist, starting resources. Oh, it, nice, it does actually say it, it's all there. Recycling when out of resources, disabled. So this is easiest. This is medium. This is hard. Tutorials disabled. Okay, we probably do need tutorials on for this. But what else changes? Building unlock objectives, disabled. Oh. And base building cost percentage is 25% more. All right, ecologist it is. Seems like a simple starting map here. To begin with, some basics. Pan the camera by moving the mouse at the edge of the screen. Very good. Alternatively, you can press and hold the middle mouse button. Very good. You can also pan with WASD. Very good. Finally, try zooming in out with the mouse wheel. And as always, question for you. Do you say WASD? W-A-S-D? WASD? What do you say? <laughs> Providing electricity with turbines. Okay, snappy graphics. This has to go on to here. Middle's probably fine. We have energy. Cleaning the soil. Now that you have electricity, you can clean the soil for toxin scrubbers. So it costs 50 leaves to do this. Oh, this can support six buildings. All right. So toxin scrubber starts cleaning the soil. That's, oh, that's, oh, only one tile needs to be in range for the power. Okay. Very good. So I could actually, like, get it even further out like that. Like, I can get this. I don't, it doesn't have to be there. I can put it there and it covers a bit more. Ah, I'm already gaming. Some buildings can be rotated with R or the mouse wheel. Select Irrigator and try this now. Irrigator. Oh, I see. It's got L shapes or straight shapes. R also works? Yeah. Okay, so we want three Irrigators. So... It's telling me to build it like that, which I guess is correct, right? Yeah, so we can do that. And that restores the grass. Okay. Now this one. It's supposed to be like that. But if I want to... Cover... Because I extended a little bit further. I want to do this. Yes. 
And if I hold shift, it does keep the building blueprint here. And then I want it to be this way. Where I can build it like this to cover all the tiles that I got. If you ever are lost, you can always look in the handbook for hints about what to do next. Okay. Greenery goal. So this is what we're doing. 25% so far. Increasing the landscape's greenery is a primary goal. But remember to keep an eye on your available resources. So there's our leaves. Okay. We've got quite a lot of leaves right now. So we need to get more, I guess. So if I wanted to get more... I should build more power. And then I could, for example, get... Toxin Scrubber. Oh, that tree's in the way, I see. Is that? Yeah, yeah. Toxin Scrubber. And then I could... Do this. Ah. Tutorial completed. Terra Nil. Oh, it just opened up. It expanded the map. Isn't this nice? These cozy, chill relaxing games that actually pose a little bit of challenge and there are i just noticed cloud shadows i love cloud shadows there's so many games that are putting in cloud shadows now i don't know whether it's because i keep saying i love cloud shadows or developers are just in love with cloud shadows right now but i love cloud shadows and like every game i'm playing has cloud shadows now <laughs> i don't know what it is but sure so, reclaim 172 more greenery tiles to unlock the next building. Okay, this should be easy enough to do. I will do this. Then I can do... Oh, this is... The scale suddenly has grown quite a bit. Let's do that. Sorry, let's do this. Do that. Do that and do that and then we just need the irrigators which I can do oh, that trees in the way but sure close enough right if I just keep these as straight lines I see why you would want to do a bit of a rotate here and there Yeah, let's do that. And we unlocked water pump. Yes, I remember water pumps. We'll do this. Very good. So water pumps, they just need to be... How does this calculate? Oh, it has... Oh, it does not flow uphill, right? But you can maximize the range if you get it to the edge of things, right? Yes. So you want it there. And also that power thing can only hit so much. Ah, make it green. I could probably get... Can I not support a water pump on this side as well? I guess not. Okay, so we need to get another 115 of those. So we're getting a lot of... Um... Let's do there. I should hold down shift for this. There. There. And then, not that one, this one. Like this, I guess. Yes. 
I unlocked a calcifier, which does... Oh, it turns the grass... Crystallizes nearby greenery, creating rock, which then allows you to build power stuff. Okay. Let's do this. And it calcifies, which I don't know if we need to do, but I guess you can just do it like this. And then you can put power there. And then you can do toxin scrubbing. And then do some irrigation. And then I got a excavator, which... Creates a new riverbed, but poisons the land around it. Can be rotated. Okay, if I wanted to do that, it needs to be in range of power. Right. So this is not. Hmm. I can cover all of this like that. I don't, water does not count towards greenery, I think. I think it's just the grass, green tiles. That gets water down that way. Okay, good. So we're at 87%. What I can do is, for example, I could put a power thing there, and then I could excavate. Okay, it doesn't go through rock, but I could excavate, for example, like this. And it can just extend the river out like that. Right, and then, for example, since we have lots of extra points, I could, for example, do this. Then have power there. Then get like two toxin scrubbers. And irrigate that. Ah. So that's how you can do things. Oh, look at the little flowers. You can zoom in quite a long ways into this. Are those bugs? Bees, maybe? I'm looking at all the details. That we got. Because the new graphics is sort of part of the whole point of this, right? Uh, I can probably hit our goal if I just do something like this. There we go. 101%. That book design is nice as well, isn't it? Temperate. Reclaiming this landscape will involve wind turbines for power, toxin scrubbers, clean soil, water pumps to restore rivers. So we've got different climates and biomes. Biomes, animals, climates. Oh no, there's different climates. Then we can create biomes in there. Once the backbone of the ecosystem is thriving, your next step is to increase the diversity of growing plants. Introduce finboss, wetlands, and forests. You'll also need to begin to pay attention to the local climate. Okay. Regions. Temperate. Okay. Look at these illustrations. They're... <laughs> It's so nice, actually. <laughs> Animals. Index. Okay. We're at level two now. We need to create wetlands, fin boss, and forests. So what do we have? We've got hydroponium, which creates wetlands. Must be built on an irrigator near water and on low ground. So I can build it there, for example. And it must be on low ground. So, yeah, okay. Let's let's just do that there. Create some wetland. So we need to have... So that is 30% of the wetland we need. I see. This is beehive. Swarming bees pollinate nearby greenery, creating finboss flowers. So this is a beehive. So I could, for example, what's a good tree for this?
not really set this up perfectly, but that works. 115. That looks pretty nice, actually. This this is this is actually quite satisfying. <laughs> what is this? Solar amplifier. Focus sunlight allowing for the starting of a controlled burn, right? It just lasers it. And burns all of that, which creates the 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 nutrient area, right? So we need to burn this stuff. There's no tree there. I could, for example, do that over here. If I do this to get that going, and then I do the solar amplifier, right? It should just burn this region. Start a controlled burn. And I just laser this. <laughs> Does it destroy buildings? It destroys buildings as well. Okay, good to know. Good to know. <laughs> Building husk. Mm -mm. I don't know if that's so good, but... We can now build an arboreum, which uses nutritious ash to create forests. It can only be built on burnt husks, I see. So we can actually build two of these here, I think, to cover all of this. And we create a forest from the ashes. Oh, that's still not enough. Okay. This game's getting hard. <laughs> we're, we're getting to a point where things are actually kind of difficult, but we should be able to continue. We need more wetlands. That should be an easy enough thing to do. How much will this plus 53? Oh, it does show on the graph how much we'll get from that. So if I do this. And then do this. That's not a lot. But it does unlock research center. Reduces the cost of some buildings and unlocks the ability to manipulate the region's climate. Uh, we can just pop this right here, I guess. Makes many primary reclamation buildings cheaper. I see. Regional climate. Now that you've learned the basics of restoration, you need to begin to address the regional climate. Okay. The climate is defined by these attributes. Right now, we are only interested in humidity, but these will change in the future. So this is humidity. Wildflowers, migratory birds, fungi growth, fern growth, water lilies, salmon runs, rainfall, greenery growth, wetlands, finboss forests. Okay. Climate thresholds. Reaching a certain threshold of attributes will have broad effects on the environment. Right. Okay, so if we get this up to 40%, there should be more mushrooms in the forests. Creates... So, buildings that grow plants, like the irrigator or beehive, are also affected by regional climate attributes. Humidity, ideal conditions. Okay. Climate manipulation. Many buildings modify the climate slightly, but some, like this cloud cedar, change it significantly. Right. Okay. Cultivating the right climate is an important step in your reclamation journey. Good luck. You see how this game has just sort of blown up in complexity? Right? It's it's just exploded in terms of how much is going on. <laughs> it started out so simple. Grow some grass. And now it's just everything. Well... I'm pretty sure, if I recall correctly, there is a third phase as well. So completing these right there, that's the, just the middle point. Okay, so we can build the cloud cedar. Use the surrounding water and oceans to encourage cloud formation and increase ambient humidity. So if I build it 
Here it goes up 13%. That sounds pretty good, right? And it takes into account the wetlands. Yes. So that gets fungi and forest. Does that actually show? I mean, I see mushrooms. I don't... I don't know if they were there before. See, those red ones? Those are mushrooms. I have to check. What What's the next one? Ferns in riverbanks. So, ferns in riverbanks. So I assume there's no ferns right now. We will look if ferns grow in riverbanks. If I get humidity up to 55%, so I need 9 more percent. I could do that. There we go. Ferns grew on the riverbanks. So everything is visually represented. Oh, I love the ferns on the riverbanks. <laughs> and yes, the excavator could increase our river tiles as well. So yes, we, we can check in on that. Uh, right now we need more forests. I don't... Hmm. Is there another place I could do a controlled burn? It's a little tricky with how I've done it. There's no tree over there. So that's kind of a problem. Um, we also just need a lot more fin boss. So let's let's do some basic stuff here. We can do this. We can do this and this. And then we want to do irrigator. Like that. So we can cover that area. I think I can get a water pump going. To fill up the river. And the ferns grow in as well. That's really nice. Cool. I love how it sort of... It doesn't all appear at once. The ferns growing, they're like... <laughs> right? It's like, they just sort of appear over time, which is really nice. Progressively, yes. Okay, so I do have a tree here, which means I could get a beehive on this. We do need quite a bit of fin boss. But also, how are we going to get more? Does it say how much? Plus 10. That's not enough. That will be enough. If I want to do a controlled burn for forests, how I can probably use the excavators to make a place to burn, right? So, for example, if I do this, and then I get the excavator, what's the range of this thing? Quite long. And then, for example, I excavate like this. Right, that destroys... Okay, yes, I gotta keep that in mind. And then I excavate like this. And then I get the solar panel here. And I burn this. Then it burns everything here without spreading to out there. And that allows me to... ...get all the trees I need. Yes! I figured it out! <laughs> Controlled burns! We did it. 
All right, so that's all the forests we need. We need a bit more fin boss, so I can cover that by putting this down and then I can do that and that. And then I just need to irrigate this way like that and then beehive here. That gets us the fin boss. Now we just need wetlands. So that's the hydroponium. It needs to be on low ground, right? What are the requirements of this? Must be built on an irrigator near water and on the low ground. So if I, for example, build... Oh, there's not enough power here. Can I build two power things? Too close to another turbine. I see. Okay. Um, how am I going to do this? I could probably make some wetland around here. So we get that and then we want to restore the land here. Then we have an irrigator. near the water and then I should be able to do this there we go we did it with plant life and climate re-established the final step is to construct an airship by recycling your buildings as you remove your presence introduce fauna to the new custodian to be the new custodians of the ecosystem. We now have to get rid of all of our stuff. <laughs> and we've built so much stuff. Vehicle speed. Oh, vehicle speed controls. Okay, so percentage of buildings that have been recycled. So, airship. Allows for the construction of the airship with materials from recycled from other buildings. So we just have to place this somewhere. It's rather big. I can fit it there, I think. Okay. So we're gonna dismantle all of our buildings. Recycling silo. Recycles other buildings and stores a portion of their cost. Okay, so if I wanted to recycle buildings, where's the biggest cluster of buildings? There. That's a good one. Perfect. Uh, this is recycling drone. Travels along rivers to collect recycled materials from loading docks. So I just have to... Can I have multiple of these? I'm not sure. Loading docks. Loads recycled materials from the silos. So if I... How do I put... Oh, it's got to be on the low ground, right? So it's got to be in range of those things. So if I build this... If I build this here, that boat will go and grab all the stuff from here and then bring it to the ship, right? Recycling silos can no longer recycle each other. Oh, okay, that does make sense. <laughs> so we need to get enough of our stuff to our airship. So then this brings... The stuff here and the airship starts building, right? I assume. 16%. Okay. So how am I gonna... Recycling silo. So I could, for example, recycle this. And then we just need a loading dock. That can be in range of that. Maybe in range of anything else? There? There. Okay, 25%. So, see, the, the less efficient you are, the harder things are gonna get, right? Because if you build a lot of crap to do your job, then you have to clean that up. 
the more stuff you build, the harder it is to clean up, right? So you got to keep that in mind. How do I do this? That's a pretty good one. We do that, and then we just have... I could, for example, do that. Okay, good. And the boat will go get it. Recycling silo. Wait, you don't need a recycling silo if you just need a loading dock. We can just do that. Right? Now, can the boat carry more than one load at a time? So it just picked up some stuff. Does it have to go back to the airship or can it pick this up on its way back? It has to go back first, okay. But you can control the speed of vehicles. Oh. It doesn't have to go back, it went to that. Okay, it doesn't have to go back. What's this? Animal Observatory allows use of sonar ping to encourage animal species to move into a habitat that is appropriate for them. You can build this anywhere. Like that. Reintroducing fauna. The final step as recycling progresses is the reintroduction of animals. Okay. New animal species will help maintain the ecosystem long after your buildings are packed away. Animal species, we need three, need to be scanned for. Open the scanning panel here. Shiny. Okay. This grazer. Okay. Switching species. Small amphibian. Right. Pass sonar scan results. Use the animal portrait to switch between animals and get a hint about where each species lives. Okay. Use this button to scan for the selected species. Each scan will give you information about the suitability of the area scanned. You'll need to find suitable habitats for at least three animal species. Okay. So, for example, deer. Grazer lives in herds on wide open grasslands. So I could scan, for example, here. It's just wide open grassland. And it's a habitat for deer. Perfect. Uh, this one. Small amphibian lives in the reeds of the wetland near a finboss field. So wetland and finboss. So like here. Frog. Okay. And then this is large caniforms domain. And there's a forest which contains a beehive and is on a hill. I don't think I have that. No, I don't have that. How about web-footed waterfowl rests in a large lake? I don't think there's a large lake, really. Industrious rodent builds its homes on a river near a forest. We do have that. On a river near a forest, like here. Yes, beavers! I was thinking rats. I was like, why Why would rats do that? <laughs> it's a beaver. I didn't know. Beavers are rodents? I didn't consider that. Are beavers rodents? Oh, right. We're supposed to still be doing this as well. I totally forgot about this. <laughs> uh, hmm. uh, wait. What did I need to build for those? Was that on the... It was under two, wasn't it? Cloud Cedar. Do I still have... Rain begins at 70%. Okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, then we need to keep recycling buildings, right? So let's go three. Oh, the rain's beginning. It's actually, it's gone blue. 
So the rain beginning is not... Not the end of the map. By the way, when you zoom out all the way, the game does seem to have some optimization issues. But when you zoom in it, it speeds up again, so it's fine. Give me my leaves! Oh, so we found deer, so deer appear everywhere. So, are there beavers? There are beavers! Look at them! <laughs> And we also found frogs, wasn't it? Yeah, there we go. It's frogs. In the wetlands next to Finboss. It's like very specific sometimes. Okay, we gotta keep cleaning up. Uh, so let's... How do I do this? Like, cleaning up this stuff is hard because I don't have a river over to it. Well, let's at least get those things. Can I... What else can I get? I can get those two. I'm not sure if I'm gonna need to build a river over to here. I might have to. I guess we should just prepare for it. Uh, excavator. So, okay, we can just need to get up to that. I think that's my best bet. So I excavate there, and then I just have to do a loading dock here. Water? Oh no, is this technically uphill? <laughs> Does that not work? This filled up probably from the rain. Hmm. I might have messed up. It's okay. Uh, so recycling silos can't recycle themselves anymore. I definitely need that. Um... This is minus 15, but I'll pick that up. What I could maybe do is grab the excavator. Oh, there's no more power over there. I need to free up power slots. No, no, I, I could just build another source of power. I could possibly come from that side? Yeah, if I set up a power grid here and here, and then I go excavator, and I excavate down to there. Can, can that go through the cliff? Yes. Right, but riverbeds don't just expand by themselves. Right, so I should definitely set this up and plan for this before... <laughs> um, Okay, well, if I just clean it up like this, does it count? So this does not pick up. It says 92%. Well, but building that costs 2%, I see. That says 94%. If I build it 
Oh, the rain happens again. Oh. Oh. <laughs> I was so worried. <laughs> the rain comes back again. Okay, so we can do that. With that happening, I can then build the loading dock. There we go. Okay, yes. This gives us plus 210. Okay, because there's so much stuff in there. Grab that stuff, please. Okay. Good. And this can pick up those. Okay. What what do I have left? Is that everything? Oh. I have to get everything, don't I? <laughs> okay, fine. Okay, so... It's really just that left, right? Okay, lesson learned. Don't do that. Um, maybe I could... no way to get up to it. Like, I have to grab it over to there. But then it's not in range there. So I have to set up power again to get excavators going and excavators going. Oh no, the rain stopped! I was too late! Okay. And then I have to wait for rain to come back, I guess. Because now I could... No, I just... Yeah, there's currently no path, but I could build a loading dock here. <laughs> okay, I messed this up a little bit. <laughs> Lesson learned. <laughs> Uh, but when the rains come again, it should flood this in. Uh, totally forgot that I had to clean up all my crap. <laughs> you can't just build everything you want. Uh, just, just lasering the land a little bit. Okay. Um, I, I can make... I Can I flood this myself? Yes, I can flood it myself. Okay. Um, I don't have to wait for the rain. Loading dock. And then I just want to pick up everything from here. Okay, and that, that's everything. Okay, yes. I forgot about the water pump. Pick all this stuff up. And the airship is ready. And then, we can launch. And leave. I'm gonna make like a tree and get out of here. Okay. The biggest challenge in this game is the one of your own creation. <laughs> you make the biggest challenge in this game. Growing the grass, getting the swamps, you know, trees are a little, little tricky to do the trees, but not that bad. The, the biggest challenge is cleaning up the mess you make on your way there. <laughs> There's an appreciate button. I've never seen an appreciate button. Let's click the appreciate button. <gasps> What a good button.
The rains come back, the grass grows again. This game has that roller coaster of like, oh, it's chill. Oh, it's getting stressful. It's getting stressful. I've screwed up. I'm going to mess up. And oh, it's chill. <laughs> it's like a very slow roller coaster. It doesn't, it doesn't, it's like a, it, like one of those chill coasters where it's just a, oh. <laughs> Ah, uh, okay, cool. Continue. There is a planet. We've unlocked the second region. So this, this first region, it's not fully green. It says 54%. Biomes restored, animals discovered. Oh, you, you can go back and climate threshold achieved five out of seven. Right, because we didn't 100% it. So I could go back. That's River Valley. This is tropical. Ooh. Temperate. Tropical. Okay. Don't know what the others are yet. Restoration progress 13%. Oh, this game is going to be good for completionists. Right? You want to get every single thing, it's counting. <laughs> right? You got to get all six animals. Like, there was just... I could not get bears just now because I did not set up a forest on Highland. Right? You needed a forest on a hill. And I didn't have that, so I just couldn't have done bear just now. I didn't look for wolf. I love the progress... Uh, it's it's all these little details. The progress bar being vines and flowers and stuff. so nice. Let's try tropical. Biomes restored. Beach, mangroves, tropical forests, coral reefs reminds me of home. Animals discovered. There's another six animals here. Eleven climate thresholds. Desolate island. Let's go. And it generates a map, so it is. I, I'm pretty sure it's random, random maps every time. Based on a seed, I'm I'm assuming. Let's restore the islands, El Presidente. <laughs> You'll need to begin by cleaning the surrounding oceans and reintroducing plant life. Toxin scrubber is integral. They cleanse both land and sea. Both greenery and clean ocean contribute towards your goal. Climate manipulation is possible from the outset here. Okay. What's our map? So... Very clear distinction between ocean tiles and river tiles. So we've got temperature. Two degrees Celsius and it's supposed to be tropical? That's bad. Okay. Ivy overgrowth. Jellyfish return. Crabs populate beaches. Coconut palms. Migratory birds. Ferns. This is really good. So there's temperature requirements. We wanted to get it up to... 40 degrees Celsius for dragonflies. It does not need to be that hot. <laughs> 40 degrees is hot. Um, thunderstorms begin 99%. We need 99. Rain doesn't start until 99% humidity and over 35 degrees Celsius. Why do you need 40 degrees Celsius for dragonflies? They're fine at 35 <laughs> Okay, so looking at this map, the more we cluster our buildings, the better. Um, but also we do want to get the high ground covered. So let's let's do the low ground first. Is that the easiest? Because low ground flat is easiest. So let's do that first. Well, there is an undo button. Good to know. And we can do this stuff cloud cedar right from the start so let's go and build can i get that there yes uh, 
How do we want to irrigate? We'll probably just do straight lines on this one. to be like is this better this is better okay everything nice and clustered together by a river lovely grass uh we can water pump here as well let's try might as well get that going i guess is that where i want it to be Maybe I don't... Maybe I can just... Build that there. And then this is far more efficient. This is one water pump, covers every river tile? Yes. That's much more efficient. Very good. Also, just checking, the ocean does completely surround. So I, I was worried, like, if the airship is here, can the boat reach... Oh, right now the boat can't reach this river. It's actually blocked off. It doesn't... The rivers don't reach the ocean. How do we clean this up? That is concerning. I will try and figure that out. Um... Okay, uh, we need to, can I just start plus 2% really? Is that the plus 4%? I think I need the wetlands first. So let's build another power thing here. Yeah, that's fine. That unlocks mineralizer. Crystallizes the salt in ocean to create Oh. Okay. We continue cleaning up the land around here. How do I want to do this? that this is rather awkward I guess this is still the best way to do it maybe that's not the best way to do it maybe I just do this Sure, I'll do that. Okay, so reclaim 408 more ocean tiles to unlock. So that's how you reclaim... Okay, so if I want to... Hmm. Let's see how this works. If I build one of these here... Doing this... It does clean the ocean tiles, right? Yes, it does. Okay, so we are cleaning ocean tiles like this. Hmm. So the irrigators obviously don't clean the ocean tiles. Yeah, that's fine. And like this. Okay. Lots of the island is green. Reach tier two. So we need 
Yeah, I think I need to unlock the tier 2 stuff. So let me just go ahead and do one more round of cleaning here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's kind of overlapped, but that's fine. That's 91%? Really? Hmm. Okay, I probably have to use this mineralizer thing. So mineralizer converts ocean tiles to rock. So, for example, if I wanted to maybe clean around here, what I could do is convert some of this to rock, which allows me to build... A wind turbine. And then I can try clean some of the ocean there. And then this irrigation. Ninety nine percent. Um. Okay. Surely I can get a one percent. That's not worth it, is it? I, sh I should just go ahead and mineralize another place. Let's just do that. Get power. Get a toxin scrubber. Here. There we go. <laughs> okay. The next step, increasing biodiversity. Yep, uh, you'll also need to use the monorail network to transport coral polyps to the sea. Okay, first let me do this. And then... Grass this up. Okay. Nice bit of grass. So we need beach, mangroves, tropical forests, and coral reefs. So if I look at this, uh, we got to reclaim wetland. Ooh, 168 plus 83. This one's pretty good. This could be like a wetland area. Nice. Let's get another one. 88, 57, 45, 61, that's 89, 40. It's not as worth it. I, I need 80 to unlock the next thing. So if I just do this one. Cool. Salinator increases the salinity of the standing area, allowing mangroves to flourish. Ah, okay, good, good. Um, I do have the wait, what's this? Sandbank creates a small island on which buildings can be placed. Huh, but also. What? Combustor. Burns surrounding vegetation to increase the atmospheric temperature. More carbon dense vegetation is more effective. Okay, so that's how we do that. And increase 14%. Moss on rock faces. Oh wait, moss on rock faces requires temperature below 10. So once temperature goes up, the moss will disappear. Are these mangroves? 
Oh, if there's wetland near the salt water, it becomes mangrove. Right, of course. It's not just wetland. I actually don't need wetland. I need mangroves. Right. Okay. So... Cannot grow because temperature is too low. Okay. This, this is... I don't know what I would do with that. So, we actually got some mangroves from that. Coral reefs... I think... What, what's the next thing? Construct three more combustors to unlock that. Reach 50% biodiversity to unlock that. So, combustors are this one. Plus seven degrees if I burn the grass. Plus three degrees there. I can just build it adjacent. Plus nine degrees there. If I burn this, does it burn the whole section? I am unsure. Like, does the fire spread? Or is it just around there? Let's burn here first and find out. Look at those vines. Are those vines from something? Or is that the moss on rock faces? <laughs> oh. you, uh, fun fact, you saw an engineering idea using mangrove trees instead of concrete wave breakers to protect the shores. Oh yeah, that, that's what we do in um, back where I'm from, in Malaysia. The, the mangrove protects the shores, right? So deforestation and destruction of the mangrove forests means the shore starts running away. <laughs> or being washed away and um, so it's bad for the environment but also bad for property developers because they lose their beachfront properties <laughs> so it's just generally a good idea all around to uh, to keep your uh, mangroves there anyway the fire doesn't seem to spread so I think I can just burn here right torch it it also doesn't destroy buildings importantly so we're up to 17 degrees. Can I... What humidity am I going for? I, I just need to maximize humidity. But it's rather tricky to do. Um, what temperature did I need? I'm, I'm able to... What is this? What am I needing? Oh, it, it converts... Oh, I see. It converts the wetland. So if I, for example, wetland here. So this is all now just... Mangrove? What was I looking at? Salinator. Yeah, so I don't need to use a salinator there because if it's near the ocean, it already becomes mangrove. But if I were to use it here, that's pretty worth it. So it converts this wetland into mangrove. Yes. Oh, that looks so good. Okay. So we've almost got enough mangrove, but we haven't even really started on the rest. Uh, I probably need to build one more combustor. Uh, not that one. Uh, this thing. One more combustor to boost up the temperature one more time. You can't combust the mangroves. This will get us up to 23 degrees. Let's just do that. Crabs populate beaches. We don't have any beaches, but okay. I built three combustors, and now that's unlocked. Litarium. Captures sand to form beaches and dunes. Must be built on a toxin scrubber. Right. Okay. So, like this it would create a beach. And 
We got crabs, because crabs populate beaches at plus 20 degrees. All right, things are coming along, things are coming along. Okay, so... Uh, we need to construct two more cloud seeders to unlock this thing. Okay, so it's asking for cloud seeders. So, rocks near the ocean that have power should... produce lots of humidity. So, for example, here we can get 11%. Ferns on riverbanks, one of my favorites. There we go, you see them popping up. And then I should be able to, this is 12% as well. Do this. IV overgrowth. I don't know what IV overgrowth means, but humidity is at 77%, temperature's 23, nice temperature to be at, but this is the tropics. It wants to be 40, apparently. Okay, but that unlocked. What is this? Shade cloth pillar. Pillars connected in triangles form shady areas where tropical forests thrive. Must be built on the side of a cliff. Huh. So, like... I see there's like a range. Okay. So you want to be like... Can I build it there? Yeah. And then... Plus 30. This, this is a weird mechanic. Plus 32, plus 38. Okay, that works. Oh, okay. Lyra Linda, thank you so much. Oh, so Zeke Farmer, thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Tropical forest, that's 18%. All right. Huh. Need to get 50% biodiversity to unlock this next one. So I guess that's what we're going for next. So there's probably some things we can still do here. Um, we could continue cleaning the ocean a little bit. Like this area down here is sort of not cleaned. We can probably do something about that. Um, if I do mineralizer. I could cover this area. I can get some power there and there. And then we can... Clean up some of this. Okay. Wait, what does this need to be built on? Oh, that's sandbank, sorry. This, I'm looking for the, not the salinate. Should I be building wetlands here? I think this gets us the mangrove we need. So let's do mangrove here. Yes, mangrove done. 110%, okay, a little bit of a buffer there. Okay, so that's mangrove sorted. Um, can I water this area here? Irrigated. Oh, that hasn't been cleaned, right? So this needs to be... If I clean this area... I can then water that and re-water some of the stuff onto the right. Okay, and then I can probably get 
What's the range of this? I can probably do that. Oh, they can connect to existing ones. Oh, oh, okay. I see. I see, I see, I see. So if I build there, and then I build here, Oh, does that not work? Oh, but that works. <laughs> okay, this works. It's just too big, so it needs more. All right, we've got more, more forests coming in. Tropical forest, 57%. Nature is healing. We're reaching 50% biodiversity. How do I get more beaches in here? Was it um, Litarium, right? So I need to... It's not a lot. Is there any better spot? Like the order you have to do stuff in. That's pretty good. So we'll have the sandy beach between the mangroves. That looks good. Then this should unlock the next building as well. There we go. And that gets us the monorail node. Nodes in range of one another connect to allow the movement of buildings along the uh, of buildings along the monorail network. Right. Use a monorail node ability one more time to unlock. Okay, so how would this work? For example, over here? If I just have a monorail there. And then I could possibly... If I do a mineralizer... Oh, can I not? It's too close. I see. You can't just mineralize out in the middle of nowhere. Okay. So if I mineralizer there and get some power over on this side... I could then potentially monorail like this, I guess. I'm not entirely sure how this works. Move a building from in range of this monorail node to in range of any other connected monorail node. Oh, move, move the building. I see. Okay, I understand. So for example, if I were to move this toxin scrubber, I could then just place it here. Oh, we can use the monorails for cleaning up afterwards as well. Yes. Okay, cool. So that unlocks this building, which is the Coral Lab grows corals from polyps, which can be moved with the monorail into clean ocean. Must be built on an irrigator. Right. So, I can build it on this irrigator. And that's a coral lab. Use your monorail network to move the coral lab into clean ocean. Okay. So, for example, I can pick this up and place it here. Is that correct? And that got me some coral reef.
Oh, it, it actually destroyed the building by dumping it all into the ocean. <laughs> right. Okay. 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 Um, we need to green this up because I need a bit more beach as well. So let's get... So what I want to do is build an irrigator here. To irrigate this area. And then... I could, over here would be good, I could build the monorail node. It's out of range. So what I want to do is have a mineralizer somewhere over here. Okay. And then I, do, min, do monorail nodes need power? What is the range of, am I seriously one off? I'm what? Okay, it's fine. Uh, I just have to build it here. So I build a monorail node here. And then I can build a monorail node here. And then I can have a monorail node here. Okay, so that's along there. And then I could pop some power here. And instead of building a new cleaning thing. I can pick up this building and move it there to help clean the ocean. And then I want to build the coral lab on this thing. And then I can pick up the coral lab And get a whole bunch of coral here. And I can do that again by... Hold on. Can I get it? Should be fun. I can do that again by... Wait, no, hold on. Um, coral labbing... Actually, let me just try something. If I just pick this up I can just place it back down and it runs again right I just move it there and it runs again yes and then I can coral lab this and then pick it up and then move it to fill this up with coral. Yes, that's looking great. Okay, cool. Um, then, if I want to turn this area into a beach, uh, what was it? It was this, right? Yeah, I can convert these two into... beach. I don't even need to be building new ones, do I? I can just move them, right? Wait, can this pick this up and place it? Okay, no, you can't just move the beach ones. That's fine. But if I build this, it will get me the beach I need. There we go. Lovely. Perfect. Okay, so tropical forest, coral reef still ongoing. Now, let me just review. I can get plus 12% here. And then I just need a little bit more. Plus 2% on... Is that the best place to build it? It's too close. Oh, just plus 15% on this thing. Yeah, okay. Get our humidity up to 100%. Perfect. Then we need to get our temperature up. So, since we can move... Mono... Can I move combustors? 
Oh, right. That would be a good idea. But I don't think I've built any combustors. Wait, where is the... Oh, that's a combustor there, right. Hmm. I don't want to burn the beach. How do I... Let's say I want to burn some stuff over there. So to do that, I would need first to get some rocks between here. Then I could get some power over here. Then I would want to get the monorail node. I could get a monorail node there. And a monorail node here. And that would allow me to pick up the combustor. Oh, but there's no rocks here. Do I have the thing that... I can move that to here. All right, then I can move this. To clean, to water this up, right? I'm trying to get it to rain now, but I need to get to 35 degrees. So I need to increase temperature by 10 degrees, which is rather tricky, right? Because like if I burn here, it's like three degrees. It's like not, not great because there's no rocks here. Um, what I think I have to do is get more rocks here so that I can get the monorail node over here. And then I could... Was this... I could rewater this area. The ash should turn to, to grass again, right? Yes. And then I can just use this monorail node to pick this up. And it has to move to somewhere else before I put it back down. So I could move it here to scorch this. Jellyfish return and vines grow. Perfect. And then I can pick this up and put it back to where it was. So, I can cycle this infinitely, right? Oh, I just knocked out my... Okay, we're still here, okay. I just knocked my camera and then my screen turned off, so it's fine, it's fine. So I can cycle this infinitely, so I just have to pick this up again and place it back down. Right, and it waters. And then I can pick this up and place it back down. So this is infinite heat, right? Yes, okay. So I can pick this up, burn that. Okay. The thunderstorm straight up began. <laughs> but we want to get it to 40 degrees. So let's pick this up and burn one more time to get to 41 degrees. And the rain restores the grass, right? Dragonflies. Okay. That's everything on the climate. Good. Now, I assume there are actually jellyfish, but I don't know where the jellyfish would be. Oh, the rain does clean up the ocean as well. Yes. Okay. Fantastic. There's fish in the coral reef. 
I don't know if... I'm sure there are dragonflies as well. Okay. So now what we need to do is boost up coral reef and tropical forests. So tropical forests need these things. We can maybe try to just... That's plus 40. That's pretty good. Like just connecting these all up. Right, the more of these you place, the easier it gets. So that just straight up gets us the forest we need. Lovely. Fantastic. And then it's just coral reefs. So since I have a network here, what I should do... Oh, there's a jellyfish. We found him. I can then do this and then pick it up. And place it there. This is not in range. Hold on. I need to just get a monorail node here. Yes. Good. And then that should be in range to pick up that one at least. So we can do this. Can I get a monorail node? Oh, it's not quite in range. So let's mineralize here. Then I can get monorail node here and pick up this coral thing. And get some coral going over there. Perfect. Okay. Almost there. Almost there. How do I get... Do I even have... We can't convert those. What do I have left? That one. Okay, so I probably have to build more irrigators. But I can at least try use this one, but that means I would need to... This would remove a little bit of coral, but sure, it's fine. Get that. Monorail node there. I can convert this thing. And then I just need to pick it up and move it. Oh, this is good. 42. 43. That might be... It's going to rain again, I think. So if it rains again and cleans up some of this ocean, I might be able to get even more coral here. I'm just going to let the rain do its work to keep cleaning the ocean. Come on. Clean up those tiles. Just those tiles specifically. <laughs> it's like dodging all the tiles I wanted to clean. <laughs> it's like, not not those ones. A bit further in. Bit bit to the left. Okay, it got one. Okay, so if I refresh this. 45. Okay, okay, there we go. There we go. This will be enough. I'm just going to see if it cleans up those times. Come on. Just a bit more. Just those tiles right there. We probably have enough already, but... Okay. 46. So yeah, the earlier you get the rain going, the easier it is because one rain doesn't clear up the whole map. It takes like three, four rains to fully clear it. Okay, 47. Pretty sure that is the best spot, right? Yeah, 47. Oop, 56 is right there. Okay, 56 is there. We could get 58 if it cleans up those two tiles. Where are you even cleaning? 
you know what? It should be fine. A couple holes in the coral should be okay, right? Diamond, thank you so much for the sub. This this will be fine. Let's build it. Transport the coral polyps over. Monorails can then be utilized for recycling. So connect your airship to the monorail network. Reintroduce marine and terrestrial animals to help maintain the ecosystem when you leave. Okay. On to third recycler station. Connects the monorail network and sends drones to recycle the areas at recycling beacons. Must be placed adjacent to the airstrip. Okay. So... That makes cleanup rather difficult, but we do need to build the animal observatory anyway. So I'll have the animal observatory near a lot of my other stuff because that stuff has to be cleaned up and this is near a monorail. So let's build the animal observatory. Let's see if we can find animals already. So beach dwelling reptile lives on an island where I can retreat into a shell. Just beach. Dwelling? Like, it just needs to be a beach? Okay. So let's scan... Here. Tortoise. Okay, perfect. So this one, unusually shaped creature, glides in the ocean near river estuaries and coral reefs. So, like... Is that river estuaries and coral reefs? Does that is this a river estuary? Does that count as a estuary? Let's try here. Manta ray. Okay. Colorful bird makes its home in lush forest canopies beneath clear skies. We have to clean up the tarps first. Okay. This wader combs for food among the sands of beaches and the mud of wetlands. So that one we've got. Sands of beaches, mud of wetlands. Like here. Ooh, sorry, my earbud. I don't know why that happens sometimes. My earbud just pops right out. Flamingo. Okay, that's good. This one, sharks. Okay, aquatic predators lives in both dense coral and in the waters of mangrove forests. Okay, that one we can get here. Mangrove coral. There we go. Reef shark. This one. This large pelagic mammal swims in the deep waters of the ocean far from land. Deep waters of the ocean far from land. The furthest from land I've got is like here. Right? Okay. Whale. <laughs> okay, I don't think there's whales quite there, but okay. So this one, colorful bird makes its home in lush forest can canopies beneath clear skies. So I have to get rid of the tarps first and then scan. I'm pretty sure. Right? I'm pretty sure that's what we got to do. Um, besides that, we got to clean up buildings. So let me go ahead and build the airship. I guess here. This is fine, right? So I'll build the airship there. And we need the recycler station, which will connect to the monorails. Okay. Recycling beacon placed on a monorail node to signify that recycling drone should be dispatched to recycle there. Right. So if, for example, I send a recycling drone to grab that, it goes and grabs all that stuff. Perfect. 
Oh, and it grabbed the monorail beacon as well. Okay, gotta be careful of that. Rock hopper. Moves a rock from one location to another. Okay. Um, I see what I did wrong. What I need to do is have monorail node here. And then I, like, rock hopper... Oh, that's how it works? Like, if I do this, it takes the rock and blasts it over there. Right? Then I could do it again. Like this. Right. And then I could... For example, do this. And then I can get monorail nodes. Is that not in range? Really? <sighs> okay, hold on. I'm trying to find a path. Okay, I can monorail node here, and then I can monorail node there, then I can monorail node here, and that connects up to there. <clears throat> and that connects up to there. Then I need... To send a rock over that side. And that connects this monorail network to this one. Okay. So I can then start... Clearing up the edges. So for example, I can clear up, up all of this. Right? So that sends the drone to go clear up that. So as I clear up, I want to make sure I, I don't clear up like a bridge here. I need to clear up from the furthest to the nearest. So this gets rid of that as well. Yes. Okay. So that clears the northern side. That beach. Okay. So I need to get... The monorail network up this way. How do I do that? I could send that rock over there. And that allows monorail network, monorail network, monorail there. And hopefully that's in range of everything, so monorail there. So if I then check recycling beacon... <sighs> okay, no, no problem, no problem. We've got all the tools and plenty of leaves so I just want to get some rocks a little bit closer there so I can stick a monorail network here and that should be in range to clear up all of this and that's in range of that okay so clear that okay I think I think I've got everything covered Yes. So I just have to make sure I go furthest out to furthest in. So this is not connected here. So I want to clear up this section. Yes. So I think I have to do this, right? To clear up those... 
Did I build two of these right next to each other? Oh, so when I send a, the beacon out to one of these, it only gets rid of the pillar I've sent it to. It doesn't clean up the other pillars, right? Yeah, okay, I see. So I actually have to do it like that. Okay. Yeah, there's, there's a bit of lag when you zoom out in this game. It, it's showing a lot of stuff. When you zoom in, it, it smooths down a bit. Those are the, there's just a lot animated. Look, those, those reef sharks are there. Like, every single thing that you add into the game, it is visually represented. Okay, so then I want to clean up this one. And... Can I send multiple? Like, how does this work? Yes, it does send them in order. So then I want to clean up that one. And then... Yeah, this one. And then... Here. Okay, I'm pretty sure that's correct. And then I want to clean up from this end. So I want to clean up there. And clean up here. If you miss one building, <laughs> you're not screwed, but it gets very annoying. Okay, so I've cleaned up all of this. Yeah, it's rained like four or five times now, and it still hasn't cleaned up all the ocean tiles. Right, so you want to get the rain going as soon as you can. Okay, and then I can clean up here. Oh, right, the tarps are gone, so I'd want to scan here. There we go, parrots. So th does this mean like a second habitat for it? I'll test that in a bit. Uh, let's now clean up. That is in range. Okay, this is in range of everything. Okay, clean up there. And we can clean up here. We can clean up this one and clean up this one. one this does get all the buildings clean up that okay then i just want to see what happens oh you can't scan it again so what is this use sonar to scan to uncover No buildings in range, right? In range of at least 20 tropical forest hours. So the, the requirements are actually very specific. In range of at least three river tiles, six coral reef, and eight ocean tiles. That's for the manta ray, right? So I don't know. Sonar means... Oh, is it because I destroyed the building? I forgot. Let me put that back down. So if I scan this again, like here, you can find three, like that. I don't know... Can you find even more? Oh, you can find as many as you like. Okay. I don't... There's, there's probably an achievement, <laughs> right? Okay. So then... Make sure we clean up that and clean up this. And that's that's everything, right? Yes, we did it. We've restored a tropical island. Look at it, it's great. Lift off.
<sighs> Wasteland reclaimed. And of course, there's an appreciate button. <laughs> appreciate. Mission appreciated. <laughs> uh. You know, I, I am a huge fan of pixel art, right? The original game was pixel art. And I loved it. And I was worried that I would not like this as much. Because just personal preference. You know, I did a poll way back when they first revealed the new Terra Nil, and most people, I think two out of three people, preferred the new graphics. But for those of you who preferred the pixel art, initially, like me, I was like, I love the pixel art, I don't want to lose the pixel art. I enjoy the new graphics. I don't know whether I enjoy it more than pixel art, because I do love pixel art. Um... But I enjoy this as much as the pixel art. So if you were concerned about the loss of pixel art, I would not be too worried. I mean, you can judge for yourself with your eyes, but generally my opinion is this is as enjoyable as the pixel art as a pixel art enthusiast. Continue. Back out to the planetary view. Restoration progress. 31%. So wait, that says 70%. What did I miss? Biomes restored, 4 out of 4. Animals discovered, 6 out of 6. Climate threshold achieved, 11 out of 11. Landing location. Is this... Is this the seed system? <laughs> That's actually quite creative. So, the total progress is 31%. It says 70% here. Locked. Oh. Do we have to come back after a while? And then there's another set of phases that we have to do. So 70% is the most you can do the first time round. Okay, understood. Oh. Anyway, I think that's a pretty good look at the game. Terra Nil, the new and improved release version published by Devolver Digital. Thank you to Devolver for providing a game key. I love this game. <laughs> I think a lot of you love this game as well. Restoring nature. You know, so many people have been complaining, oh, why do so many games, why does every game have to have combat and military and resource exploitation? Where's the ones that are just about, you know, restoring nature, you know? Here, yeah, it's right here, Terra Nil. By the time you see this video, it should be released. I like it. Um, I like the original pixel art. This one, there's a lot more to it. You know, scanning for um, the animals. Even though if that's... Scanning for the animals is not difficult to do, but there are certain situations where, for example, the way I restored nature on the first map, I could not find bears. So I'm gonna have to do it again. So there's quite a lot of replayability. This is an initial look, so obviously there's more to go. I, there's two more islands at least, and at this rate we're only going to be, like, doing the four islands is just going to be like the 50% mark on this progress bar down here. So there's quite a lot of gameplay here. And the three difficulty levels, this is on medium difficulty, right? So it could be harder, but it could also be easier. You know, I'm not struggling so far, but you know, the game just keeps getting more and more complex as you go along. So there's quite a lot to the new Terra Nil. 
I I don't know what I could criticize it for at this point. You know, I, I just I can't think of a, a negative thing to say right now. <laughs> so yeah, I like it. it. It's different from most other building puzzle games out there. I like the nature theme and it, it executes it in a way where it's like, oh, what's that? Oh, look at that. I found that. Oh, look at those little details. Okay, w one negative. It's rather unoptimized when you zoom out. But keep in mind, I am streaming and recording at the same time as this. Um, but I also have a beast of a machine. So if you have a beast of a machine, there won't be any problems. If you have a lower end machine, then you might want to tweak the graphic settings. I'm running this on, as far as I know, max boom, everything. So a little bit unoptimized when it's fully zoomed out. Or rather, I say unoptimized. It's just got a lot to show. I don't know if you could optimize it anymore. Maybe it's already optimized to the most it could be. There's a, there's so much visual detail. So it's it's great to look at. And it really knows what it is. The fact that it has an appreciate button. <laughs> <laughs> right at the end when you finish the map, you know, an appreciate button. This game knows what it is and it just delivers on that. So if you like the idea of Terra Nil, this knows it is Terra Nil and it delivers Terra Nil. <laughs> so yeah, anyway, that's our look at the new Terra Nil. I love it. Go check it out if you want. Um, if you want to support the channel, there's going to be a GOG referral link down below or wherever. Um, and you can buy any game on GOG and support the channel. So thank you so much for that. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Bye.